So for everyone who's just joining us now, I'm Catherine Delaloy. I'm the general manager for Production Paradise. I'm here live from Barcelona together with some of China's leading creatives. So first of all, thanks to all of you to be here today. Um, I know it's already quite late in, in China. For most of you, it's past 8 p.m. So I'm very thankful you took the time to, to speak with us. And before I get started with asking you some questions, I'd like just for each of you to, to present yourself. So first person we have here is James Lee. Hi, James. Yeah. Hi there. Hi there. Hi guys. Can you tell us about sure. yourself? So, so um, I'm a, a creative from uh, the agency with agency background. I've been uh, as as a creative guys, they've been around. So I've been uh, been to all the big agencies like Ogilvy's and Saatchi's and the McCann's and the JWT's of this world. I've uh, done that for 20 years, and I've recently just ventured being on the client side. So now I'm a creative director at Oppo. Uh, and uh, for those who don't know what Oppo is, Oppo is a, a, a small no, I think we lost, uh, <laughs> we lost James. Um, okay, we, we can go back to, to James afterwards. So, Hero, do you want to take over? Uh, sure. Hello, I'm Hero. I am a, a still life photographer, uh, mainly shooting cosmetics um, product shooting. Um, and uh, um, I am based in Tokyo but actively shooting in Shanghai as well. I also shoot a little bit in um, Hong Kong and Singapore. So I work uh, pretty much um, all around Asia. Okay, thank you. And then we have Rodney Evans. Hello, uh, so I'm from Central Studios and uh, we're, a, we're a big photo and, and a lot of video these days, studio in, in the center of Shanghai. And uh, we've been running for over 10 years. Uh, I'm originally from, from uh, Australia. Uh, the work that we do, we work with a lot of uh, multinationals. Our studios is, is a, uh, one of the premier rental facilities in Shanghai and uh, just produce a range of photo and video content for our clients. Okay, thank you. Um, and then we have Jocelyn and Eddie from Amana Click. Um, Edi, you want to start? Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Edi, the artist agent and creative producer with the Mana Click. Our business is focused on the print and the video production and also artist management. Our artist is like uh, photographers and illustrators, CGI, animators, and also a lot more experimental artists these days. So yeah, and my role as a photo agent, artist agent and a creative producer, so I help uh, propose the artist to book as a brief and uh, um, do the product project management management for the illustrative related campaigns. Okay, thank you. And then you work with uh, Jocelyn, who's in Singapore. Yeah, hi, I'm Jocelyn. Hi, I'm the um, production director and head of artist representation in the Mana Click. So I'm currently based in Singapore, but I do fly between Shanghai and Singapore regularly, of course, before the whole lockdown happens. Uh, I also have like an um, advertising uh, producer background in ad agency. So I've worked in publicists, one in London and one in Kennedy before I moved back to um, working in a production company. Okay, thank you. And then finally, we have uh, Pietro and Sally, who is Italian but based in, uh, in Shanghai. Yeah, hi, I'm Pietro. Hi, everybody. Um... I'm a freelancer photographer based in Shanghai since yeah five years. I, I kind of mostly just work freelancer, so I have my own customer. I can cooperate with the agency also. I mostly mostly shoot interior, food, architecture, also commercial shooting, and uh, yeah, kind of that's it. Yeah, and I cooperate with some video production company also. Can uh, can post production also. Yeah. Okay, and how long have you been living in, in Shanghai? In Shanghai, five years. Five years. Five years. Right. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, thanks again for everyone um, to be here. So I'm just going to get started with asking you some, some questions uh, we've been collecting over the past few days from, from some of our connections. Um, so the first one is, you know, I think everybody wants to know how has the recent, you know, pandemic and the lockdown 
affected your business over the last three months uh, in terms of clients, you know, events you had planned, campaigns, workplace. Um, I don't know if Pietro, you, you want to start? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, actually, yeah, this time has not been easy for everybody. Uh, in China, yeah, it's, now it's start to get a little better. But for my for my view, actually, because you asked me about the workplace, for example, I'm a freelancer, so I don't need to worry about about having an office because I have my own office, my house. So I already start to work home working, you know, since a you know, really long time. So I don't really need to worry about that. And uh, and then as I told you before, it's like, yeah, all the customer actually, they're just waiting. So the situation is really not clear or when, when it's gonna start or when the client is gonna do the project or, so it's kind of uh, the same t- the same time worry, but at the same time, I, you, you like, like we talked before, we should improve ourselves and still show to people what we are doing and what we did in order to be ready when everything is, is going back on. Okay, thank you. Um, Rodney? Uh, yep, so I guess um, the, the main thing is that, you know, there's been job cancellations and job postponements. Uh, I think I think for us, uh, it was it was timed to happen around, um, well, it was timed that it all happened around Chinese New Year where, where things were kind of traditionally a bit of a slow thing for us. But moving into Chinese New Year, we, we had a big pipeline and uh, some of those jobs just disappeared because they were time sensitive and uh, others have been postponed. Uh, we had a lot of jobs that were postponed and then they've come back with some budget cuts then another batch of jobs which are sort of location based and just postponed indefinitely. Uh, from the studio perspective, obviously because of the social distancing and people in lockdown, uh, there was, you know, the business just dried up completely for, for over a month, two months. And it's really only been uh, the past week or two that things are starting to pick up again. And, um, but in a big way, I think everyone's been, um, had a lot of pent up demand and now uh, we're seeing a lot of people coming through. Mm. So later on, I'm going to ask you, you know, how how you're doing the shoots right now, if anything has changed. So someone just asked a question, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, Eddie, and yeah, you want to give us your, your input? Yeah, sure. L- like I said, working places definitely changed because we, we transfer our office to the home. But thanks to the technology, so and also because of the nature of my work, I can just pretty much work as usual by, you know, just have the uh, laptop and the mobile on hand. And also Zoom meetings and the WeChat group meetings is widely used for daily base and uh, quite convenient. So I don't think the, the work is pretty much, the work mode is not pretty much uh, affected by the pandemic things. But of course, the business is, has been slow during the last two months lockdown, and we got some projects cancelled. But on the other side, we also got some projects which has to be uh, used to be the live shoot, and has been shifted from the shooting oriented to the CGI and the post driven. Mm-hmm. So, and positive thinking, I think the business around Chinese New Year is never that quick. It's always a bit slow compared to other seasons. So. I don't think it's, it's that much worse this year compared to you know the previous years during the last two months, and also luckily uh, the situation in China these days has got the stabilized. Uh, right before the client lost the confidence in their in creating more contents to the quarter two and the quarter three campaigns, so luckily the business actually is living up quite quickly. And uh, also thanks to our diverse roster of illustrators, animators, and CGI, and also we have the in-house post team, so they can still provide a multiple alternative approach for clients to fulfill their campaigns. Mm-hmm. So I think it's not that bad, actually. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Hiro, how, how has it been for you? You were, you were in Japan, no, recently? <coughs> Um, yes, uh, it's been uh, affecting in so many ways. Uh, well, first of all, I am 
right now in my place in Shanghai taking quarantine because I recently came to uh, Shanghai for a shooting job. And today is my last day of the quarantine. But um, I'm a photographer who is shooting in different countries constantly. So to me, this uh, travel ban is a really huge thing that you know you you, you cannot enter uh, many countries and also even if you could enter you have to take the quarantine for 14 days and that makes a lot of jobs um, impossible to happen okay thank you and james glad to have you back <laughs> so hey. you, um, you just froze when you were gonna say what yeah. what is oppo so maybe you just want to finish that first um, so uh, Oppo is a smartphone company. We're not uh, we're not the big uh, big players at the moment, uh, like Huawei, but um, they're they're a decent medium sized uh, uh, smartphone company, and they're starting to really starting to grow inwards in in the in the young market. Mm -hmm. So uh, hoping so I've joined them as a creative director, and, and I'm hoping hoping to do you know, a lot of their advertising and content work. Okay, great. And so how was it for you uh, as a creative director? How did you see the business, you know, affected over the last three months? Um, it's, it's quite scary uh, from, from, my, from our perspective. I, I work on um, big clients that pay retainers. So you can know by, you know, when it comes a financial year, there's going to be a big hit and then uh, things will happen. Um, in terms of working, we, we still worked uh, remotely, which I hate because... Uh, <laughs> You know, creative is is, is uh, the person. I'm kind of old school, so you know, you like sitting across the other person. You start talking about just nonsense, and, and something will come spark. That's how the, you know, mashing two unrelated things together. That's how kind of creative it is. But with, when you're in isolation or working from home, there's nothing. nothing you can do. All you can do is just uh, go on the internet and watch YouTube and see what you can like kind kind of what's what's current. But that's a good thing that you know the internet is still there, still working, luckily. So you know we've we've got that to fall, fall back on to do research. But mm -hmm. um, in terms of working, I it's been a I don't like working in isolation. It's good for about a week, and then you yeah. run out of TV shows to watch. <laughs> so but, um, so that's what uh, what I found. Mm -hmm. um, today today you're back in your office and we're back with yeah, so, yeah so um. In, in China, for the big companies, we've been going back in phases. So it was totally work from home. And then maybe 20% of the office people come back. And then 40%. Now it's 100% now, like at the office. Okay. Okay. James, I actually just got a, a question for you. Um, it's, um, Julia is a photographer. She said she had a, a campaign lined up for January in China. Mm. Uh, but it was cancelled for obvious reasons. Um, she's asking if she sh should chase or is it just too too sensitive to to do that right now? What do you think? I think now's a good time to start touching base with them and just see where the project is at, um, because things, uh, as as he and probably Justin said, things are starting to move. May not be big productions. Um, if it's TV, it's less than fifty people or forty people. Um, you can't have more than that. Uh, photography, which is probably a lot easier. So um, I think. Uh, yeah, I think I think now's a good time to start touching base, seeing if it's still going on or they've just postponed it. Uh, just following up uh, is 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 a good time to start talking now. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so I'm moving on to another question. Um, so, if you have any advice for other people in the same in your same industry, whether it's producers, photographers, you know, creative directors, on how do you think they could make the most of their time during the the lockdown. Um, have you learned, you know, anything that you you can you can share with the others? Um, as, as creative, there's always we, we've always been uh, hard working on other people's brands, uh, but now's a good time to like work on your personal work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I, I, have a, I have a young son, so all my time is spent looking after my, my young son and teaching him how to do, you know, drawing and stuff. Um, but we all have pet projects really just keep yourself busy um you know the and, and and don't be too pessimistic the you know the it will it will go over i know i know it's it hasn't been easy and and I, i've been one of the fortunate ones uh yeah but 
keep keep researching or do or coming up with ideas. Um, you know, when when we when we first started out in advertising, we've always had a thousand ideas in in our mind. Now now's the time to just kind of relook at our ideas, what we had in the past, uh, do scamps. It's easy at home, um, and, and then present present work that you you really want. I think uh, yeah, just 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 stay positive as well. Um, yeah. All right, good. Okay. Um, I don't know, Rodney, do you have any, <coughs> sure. any quotes? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we, we didn't really know w when we went into shutdown how long and how long this would all last. And, and um, so once we all got over the shock of it, we, we sort of started to, to really look at it as an, an opportunity to catch up on some things that you might not ordinarily get to do, uh, I guess. From my perspective, it was a little bit more of a company strategy sort of thing. Often we're just so busy doing the work that we don't get a lot of time to think. So it was a good opportunity to discuss with my partner about, uh, you know, the company purpose and, and the mission and the vision and just a little bit more of a kind of broad strategic stuff about who we are as a company and where we want to take it. So uh, it gave us a lot of time to think about that. Um, from a team perspective, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if there was any advice, you know, one of the things that, that I told our team to do while they were working from home, uh, when, when all of our jobs were still so uncertain, was just to kind of research artists. So uh, we don't represent talent directly, but we, have, we do a lot of art buying. So um, we're always on the lookout for, for photographers and directors, and, and it was a great opportunity that they could really kind of dig in and find some new talent. Okay, great. Um, Eddie, anything you, you want to add? Sure, I think, yeah, as we said, I just, I mean, stay positive and also I think it's important to stay creatively inspired. And I, I've been, because, you know, we, when we are under the shelters, all my attention is drawn to the screen of my mobile. So I do a lot like browsing online. Then notice actually a lot of local and creatives, they see the opportunities for organizing the personal projects, which is brilliant. They contributed talent to, uh, you know, the virus battle in their unique and very creative ways. I noticed there are some local directors and photographers. They organize some very engaging projects and short films or documentary photo series of the surroundings, like people's life under the so special period. And uh, yeah, I mean, with people all staying at home these days, uh, how you can imagine it's very meaningful to them to, you know, have some skill for camera holder to tell them, review the word from the outside and uh, to feel the connection and to, to keep the morale up. So I also got you know, a quite a good, quite a few like a great local talents through their works. They posted online on YouTube, on the Douyin and like, you know, the local version of YouTube. And um, yeah, actually there's some um, local talents. They sh for example, there is the one Wuhan uh, director called Le Shuting. I'm not sure if you know, because he is now quite hot, soft after in China because he shoots this uh, Wuhan the balcony is called. So they shoot the, the Wuhan people's life on the shelf on the balcony because that's the only place they can breathe the open air. So this, this series of film went just instantly like uh, got up like 8 million hits on the internet. So now he is also assigned by the government to do more such projects. So he's becoming like an unknown uh, creative in China and two uh, quite famous ones just during the two months of lockdown span of time. So I mean, as long as you can, you know, stay positive and try to seize opportunities, stay sensitive. It's just a good chance, I mean, to, to improve on, on the career. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, just uh, it's all about uh, how, you, how you see the situation and how you try to adapt to it. Yeah, yeah. and I guess it is the time to, to focus on personal work and to just try different things and put it out there and you, know, you might create something great that might go viral. So I think definitely a lot of people now are getting more creative and they have the time to to test their skills and to try something something different. Yeah, um, I mean, even, even for me, I'm, I'm another example. I'm just working from home and with two babies in house. So definitely I don't have much time for doing some creative things, but uh, it's still the best family, family time, you know, bonding time ever. So, I mean, just stay positive and do what we can do. Yeah, yeah. do it very soon, I believe. Absolutely. So let's hear maybe from one of the photographers. Um, Pietro, do you want to 
you want to tell us what if you have any tips for other photographers who who are in lockdown anything you've done at first i want to say that to all the creative people it's better that don't don't stop moving otherwise really our soul would be would be becoming so weak so don't stop moving is a must so everybody even in this time we, they should they should keep thinking or keep or reinvent themselves in some other ways uh, or somehow. For me, from my point of view as a photographer, uh, yeah, because because the actually opportunity now is less and less because the situation is too, I just, like everybody, everybody said, keep working and uh, organize your portfolio. Or for me, for example, I, 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 I finally, because I never, <clears throat> never have the courage or the time to do it, I finally organized one exhibition with my artworks, so also that maybe can be uh, a good chance to, to to make me know by by other people. Or also, I start to teach lessons about photography online, like using Zoom. Or... So the most important, yeah, is never stop uh, because also we cannot really control the situation. So I cannot really say, okay, one month, that's it, everything is fine. So we we also don't be should not be also so depressed and say, oh my God, what is, go what is gonna be? So for me, from my point of view as a photographer, just keep shooting and uh, even your personal work and and that's it. Yeah, at least keep your mind uh, busy. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, the first question is, you know, do you think it's important for you to keep, you know, being present, uh, especially online? So using social media, uh, using, you know, um, places like Pollution Paradise to, to keep promoting your work and keep putting yourself out there? Or did you feel that, you know, there was no point to, to do that at the moment? Um, Eddie, you want to start? Uh, yeah, sure. I think it, I mean, it's no matter when, I think it's always very important to, you know, stay on put on, on the online because now we are living this advantage digital era. So I think especially during this period, online presence is extremely important because that's all we can do. Definitely the marketing, all the marketing we can do, we cannot do event, we cannot do the client meeting. So basically what we can do only is digital marketing. So yeah, during the lockdown time when the China is in the most severe virus outbreak and the, the outside world is still okay, then we got a lot of um, the China clients who is trying to explore the options to shoot overseas. So I use a lot of production paradise, try to source out you know, the overseas production house and uh, overseas photographers and just try to, you know, to, to see, to, to help a client to explore the options to shooting overseas. And uh, nowadays, because uh, China borders just, uh, you know, forbidden all the foreign visitors, and now we are just using social medias in China to try to dig out more local talents. So, yeah, as, as I just said, the direct little shooting, also I find it on the social media, on the Douyin and the Kuai Show, these kind of, uh, you know, Chinese version of uh, YouTube. So I think definitely um, it's super important for every creative to keep themselves active on, on these platforms to be seen, to remind that, you know, they are still alive and ready to answer all the requests. Yeah, not be forgotten. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, um, maybe Hero, you want to you wanna talk about that? Mm, uh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't think I can add anything new, but uh, as Pietro said, it's really important for our soul not to you know stop moving forward and uh, perhaps this is the best timing for us to work on our uh, personal work and brush up the portfolio and uh, publish everything on the social media we know uh, we, we know we should do it but always we just go after paid jobs and uh, try to get some money and pay the bills but uh, you know, um, you have time now, so it's the it is the best time and to you know work on it. And hopefully, um, after half a year or one year later, we will have a better future. Yeah, thank you. And maybe a question for James, a little bit different. Uh, but do you have any advice for photographers who are trying to approach creative directors such as yourself? 
on the best way to do it. You know, someone asked earlier, is it you know sensitive now to to try and reach out to to someone like you, um, or do you feel like you have more time to to look at you know new talents? Oh, we definitely have more uh, time to look at new talents. And my advice to photographers is, um, you know, as creatives, we're always looking for a fresh eye on, on, on things. You know, some, show something that we have not, in an angle or, or in, a, in an effect that we've never seen before. Uh, you know, we, we always look for that. Because we're not photographers, we're, we're creatives. We might come up with the idea, but the execution, we rely he heavily on and... Uh, on photographers and sometimes they can really inspire us you know something in their portfolio if it's some kind of some kind of effect photography effect that we we, we, we haven't seen before if we like that stuff we a lot of times we kind of bend the creative to work make it work into that effect because we like the you know the, the execution so much so i mean i'm not sure i don't think you know that all the all the photography techniques have been exhausted yet so if, they, if you can pioneer something if, if now's the time you know to pioneer something interesting for, for sure um uh for creatives we uh we 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 have time to do more research uh you know discover new things out there there are so much so much on the night online that we can you know a thousand lifetime may not be enough time to 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 uncover so you know i i go for a lot of behance and see what's new what's fresh uh, and I s spot a talent. I'll, I'll reach out sometimes and just you know just talk to just talk to the people. Um, expanding your 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 circle is very important at this time. I think now is now is a very good time to get yourself noticed. Um, everyone said said really good comments. You know, always keep moving, keep publishing. Now is a very good time to to get noticed. Um, where wherever you are, uh, the, the web has made everything so close for us together. So, yeah, I think everyone had a really good response to this. All right, thank you so much. So let's move on to the next questions. I think a lot of people want to know, you know, how it's been for the last two weeks. So now some of you are back at work, and I think a lot of people want to know, you know, are they, have you changed um, the way you, you're producing content outside? Um, you know, have you seen um, new restrictions put in place that stops you to do the things the same way you were doing before. And I think someone also asked, you know, if, um, if overall in China, like different places have different regulations and, well, but if you want to do an outdoor shoot, you know, is it the same whether you do it in Beijing or in Shanghai? And, you know, how do you handle this um, for upcoming, upcoming productions? Um, I don't know if Rodney, Rodney, you want to start? Yeah, sure. So uh, I guess since things started to, up in 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 China, uh, I, the first step was it started with a bit of a trickle, and then our customer, our clients were getting a lot more confidence to really start moving forward with shoots. And uh, and really for the past two weeks, every day we've had you know several incoming sort of inquiries, and, and the pitching and the quoting is is really uh, picking up steam. Um, added to that, you know, job confirms and. Um, in inquiries from everywhere. In terms of getting it done, um, we have a shoot going on in Beijing right now, and the shoot itself uh, was, was a couple of segments over, over three or four days, but because of the rules in Beijing, our team couldn't just fly in for those three or four days. If they were uh, gonna be there for one or two days, they could have flown in on a business, with, a, with a, sort of like a business permission, we had to write a company letter and then they could have returned uh, within that time. But because the shoot was more than two days, then all of a sudden they had to do 14 days quarantine, which, uh, which I don't quite get the logic, but uh, I guess they were stuck there. So, so we, had to, we had to factor in um, a budget to hold our crew in Beijing for two weeks and, and the client agreed. So uh, that was, um, I guess, you know, you know it, it's, it's, we, we were also, it's not an opportunity just to kind of add on charges. I mean, we just need to cover costs and be sensitive to the client's needs as well. And uh, um, so there are all kinds of challenges, you know, on all of our shoots we, we have a, like a health station and, and, and um, sanitizers and making sure that everyone is signed in. And in China, there's a system where people have a green QR code if they're in the clear. Uh, there's a very 
comprehensive digital system where, where people can check that they've done their quarantine. So everyone needs to have gone through that to be able to be allowed on set. And of course, we're trying to minimize um, crew numbers where possible. Okay, thank you. Um, Jocelyn, um, anything you, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what uh, Rodney has said. I mean, even though the lockdown has been like um, partially lifted, there's still a lot of unknowns and travel restrictions within China. So we have to constantly check with the authorities from the different cities and provinces because they all have like different rules. So it's really, you know, reaching out to the authorities and checking with them and making sure that we, we are bound by, by the rules and regulations. Um, there's also other measures like, you know, having a te having temperature check and health stations on shoot and then making sure that there's no sharing of food and stuff like that. You know, we're just trying to like, you know, keep to the hygiene levels and just make sure that um, everyone stays vigilant mm -hmm. so that, you know, um, you know, it's really just getting um, everyone's confidence that, you know, should can take place as long as we um, keep ourselves safe. So it's pretty much, you know, all these um, added measures that we have taken um, during this period, which is just probably just the past two weeks. I mean, things really just get picked up in the past weeks. Uh, um, we, in March, we were actually rotating teams. We still had the BCP um, in place. But come 1st of April, we were, I think almost everyone is back in full force. So we have everyone actually, you know, crowding and everyone in the same office space. So I think this is the time that we also need to also remind ourselves to be extra careful because, you know, you just don't want another wave of infection or, you know, anything that could disrupt, you know, the, 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 the industry even more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, someone was asking if it would make sense to plan a fashion shoot in China, um, let's say in May, or is that too, still too early, I think, to plan something ahead? I think probably not May. I, I don't I don't think the government will allow for that because the fashion shoot will we definitely will require a high level of crowned, you know, crowning. So I guess May is still too soon to, to you know, to say that. So probably, I, I guess, hopefully, uh, in August or something, but I'm not sure. Yeah, because the government's notice is always very short and urgent, and we can never predict and how it will go. But uh, hopefully, will be by autumn. It's just my personal sense. Okay, so now you have to focus on small shoots, ideally indoor yeah. or really small crews. Outdoor, we already started some outdoor shootings, but uh, I don't think we are allow for for like a big a big crowd of extras. Mm -hmm. I guess as long as the model is within like a dozen, something like that, it should be still fine. But over that, I think we still need to recheck and uh, yeah, because you never know about the concrete restrictions by the government. Okay. Okay. So hold on to any like big fashion shoot or lifestyle shoot for now um, in, in China. You mean the shoot, fashion shoot? Yes. Oh, oh, sorry. I saw it the fashion event, like some, some no, fashion shoot. No, 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 shoot. fashion shoot. I think fashion shoot is still okay, but of course, if it depends, really depends on the needs and how much models and you know how much, what kind of locations you require. Yeah, yeah I, I think if I might step in here, I mean, you know, if these people are planning to fly to China to do a shoot, well, obviously, you know, there's a lot of restrictions there, and no one knows when the borders are going to open up. I mean, but if, if people are looking for local people to do shoots, I mean, and I, I, what I'm seeing is, you know everyone's ready to work and, and, and there's a way around it. If shooting on location, uh, we were looking into a location um, down by the river and we've been told they're not opening it up to shoots yet, uh, maybe in May. But, you know, it's also the kind of thing that if, if you're small and a nimble shoot and you can get away with one model and a photographer and a really light crew, like, I, I think you should be able to do it. I, I mean, as an example, last weekend was a long weekend and we just took the family down to the river for a picnic and it was so many people there. So there's a mood in Shanghai that people can get out and do things. Um, and certainly fashion shoots in studios is no problem. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it would be a problem if people wanted to shoot in May. Um, okay. Just it depends what they wanted to do. But look, everyone's ready to work here. Yeah. yeah. So I think ideally... Ideally, people have to focus on, you know, maybe hire, hiring you um, from yeah. some local production companies to do the shoot, but of course, doing it remotely, you know, which is something I think a lot of people are, are now learning to, to deal with. So um, I think it was, uh, Eddie, you told me you had a, 
a client maybe from Germany who, who reached out to, to do oh, a yeah, yeah. yeah, we started to get some like overseas requests asking for the production facilities, also like the fashion or lifestyle related outdoor shoot. So yeah, we, 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 are, we are waiting for the concrete brief, but uh, of course, uh, I mean, the outdoor shoot is um, definitely visible, but uh, of course, the, the, like, the models, if they require the Caucasian models, also the, I mean, the, the, the choice is kind of limited compared to the normal years, but mm -hmm. still we can you know, expand our searches in the, in, the, in the cities outside of Shanghai, so still can keep our um, you know, options open. Yeah. Okay. So you could help foreign companies to, to produce a campaign in China, um, they would have to give you the brief remotely, probably do like a live yeah. stream, you know, while you're Yeah, I think they think of Shanghai because Shanghai happened to be, you know, the once colonized city. So there is the Europe style, the Western style, the, you know, the urban view. So it can, you know, mock up like the European style. So it's like shooting in the Europe, but actually it's in Shanghai. I think that's also what they think of and uh, approach us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that was one of my last question, you know, was what can you offer to foreign companies? who need really, you know, to produce content and might turn to you guys to, to help with that. Um, I don't know if Robert Pietro, um, I mean, you, you do some, some interiors um, shoots, which might be a bit more um, tricky, um, but have you, have, any, have you had any clients outside of China who reached out to you to, to see if you could help with, with a campaign? Actually, outside China, no. Uh, but yeah, actually, ev ev everyone should like. Um, uh, yeah, they, they they still can do things in China. It just need to be more organized before and and check what they what they need to do and how many people need to come to China or to one place. Like Rodney said, actually, people in Shanghai they, they are ready to shoot, and everybody in Shanghai, so there's no problem. Even the campaign, the customer is, is not in China, but we can actually deal with that in Shanghai, for example, me, I live in Shanghai. So I think uh, the only suggestion is that they, keep, they can keep do, doing that. But of course, because this situation just make clear who is going to come in that place and, uh, and uh, really what they, they need to do and uh, how many locations shooting and they need to check first or or anyway, it's, maybe it will take more time, of course, to, to make everything clear, but I think it's still okay to shoot here, yeah. Okay, great. And maybe a question for James, a little bit different. Um, do you feel like ad agencies have changed a little bit the way that they, they are creating content right now, or the way they, they're gonna advertise their brands? Um, and, you know, did you see the industry changing? Um, compared to, um, to how it was before? Um, yeah. Has it changed? I mean, it's changed the way we work, uh, obviously, for the last couple of months. Um, but uh, other than that, no. no. Um, once we get back to work, it's, it's, it's you know, we, we do the same thing. But, so it's not, well, of course, when it comes to production, you know, the, the entire panel is it's just, it's just told, told uh, uh, or, 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 or what's happening at the moment, you know, we're very limited. We can only shoot, if we want to, we want to shoot. If we want to be on a shoot, we can only shoot here. We can only find existing directors, DOPs, talent, you know, the whole entire crew has to be here. And of course, yeah, Beijing's probably no, because anybody coming in to Beijing is 14 days immediately. Um, or do we consider uh, there was a job here that was wanted to be shot in London. We were considering do it remotely. Um, they already just did a job was in South Africa. They were supposed to go, but then it was done remotely. And so the job turned out quite quite okay in the end. Um, so yeah, th there's a lot lot of lot of compromises at the moment on uh, production value. We feel um, not not that the production here is, is not good, but if you have more diverse talent uh, talent coming in from the outside, like DOP from you know, France or so. It, it just adds to the richness uh, of, of, the, of the thing. So at the moment, uh, in terms of creative process, it's the same. Uh, we, we do what we do, but the production becomes a lot more challenging. Okay. Um, someone just asked what are the main um, challenges with remote filming? So, <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know if maybe who's done a campaign recently remotely, Rodney, I don't know if, if you've uh, not yet. We, we've got one coming up next week that we're going to live stream. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, we, we it's, a, it's a combined uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, and local client here. Uh, so so we'll be we'll be setting up live streaming so people in Hong Kong and Singapore can tune into the shoot uh, to TVC. Um, so but uh, yeah, but that's working with a local director. So at least the director is going to be on set, but just to get instant feedback with everyone, we'll let you okay. know how it goes. And and what uh, what software are you going to use for the for the live stream? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I mean, I've got the DIT. He's got it all sorted. I, I need to look into that. But um, yeah, I can find out the details and share it with the community. <laughs> okay, great. So let me see if there's just a couple more questions from from some people. Um, Yeah, I think one that we already answered, but you know, I think it's not so clear um, if you're really allowed to do a full shoot outside in the streets of China, or do you actually have to ask for a permit first? Do they really control, you know, how many people are there? Do they control, you know, that you have, um, um, yeah, social distancing, that everything is in place to, to do it properly, or they kind of trust everybody to do it, you know, the proper way? For me, like usually, yeah, you, you should get the permit to shoot outside, even in a normal situation, and depend where you want to, you can shoot. Like also Rodney said before, like if you are like photographer, two assistant, and the two model, maybe you can you can easily do it anywhere, and nobody bother you. So, but because this situation, yeah, of course, we should ask before in case in case wasting time on uh, everything. But usually, yeah. If a big crew coming, they always ask any license, any, any approval from the, uh, the, 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 the district area. So they should, yeah, they should ask before, I think. And is it, is it quick to get that? Or is it like a whole process which, which takes a week um, to get your approval? But to be honest, due to this situation, I don't know. Because me, to be honest, I never really have to ask as a freelance mm -hmm. uh, with the agency, allow me to go in one place. So it's... I, I think it's going to be more, more, more difficult. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else wants to, to add on to that? I think it's just really location specific. Different districts have got different rules and, uh, you know, there's so many shooting on location in China has got so many variables anyway, depending on where you are, what kind of location and how big the crew is. So, uh, you know, I think in China, there, there's always a way, um, but I think the most important thing is really just making sure that safety is the first and uh, managing, uh, ma ma just managing everyone's expectations as to really what we can, what we can achieve. And did you get like a set of guidelines from the government? Let's say, you know, I'm, I'm a makeup artist and I'm coming to do a fashion shoot. Um, you know, is there any guideline to keep the hygiene in place or again it's just using your common sense and trying to you know. I think look, there's a lot of common sense I think uh, I, I, I can't speak for, for makeup whether there's specific guidelines I mean the, the real the guideline the main guideline the filming industry got was was really to firstly there was a shutdown and then they wouldn't allow shoots uh, over 50 people so there are those kind of guidelines. And then, and then on top of that, you just take into account all of the standard day-to-day -day health precautions that, that we've been uh, practicing anyway. And, and common sense, yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think a few of the answers that have been said before about you know, sharing food and, and having the medic on set. People are pretty cautious here. Okay, great. Okay, so I think that's all we have time for today. Um, if anybody wants to add any, anything before we, we log out, please talk now. Yes. Yes, hero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just want to um, uh, say um, two things. Um, one for uh, my um, fellow photographers, another one for the um, agency and clients. 
um, especially the, the agency and the clients in overseas, I mean, in Europe or the US. Um, first of all, to the photographers, um, it, this is a little bit contradictory to what I said before, but um, I've been splitting my uh, business into different areas in, around Asia. And this time, it, it, I was fortunate doing that, doing this. Because um, um, this year, starting from sometime in January and February, and probably uh, to the end of uh, March, um, my business in China was dead, totally dead. However, I could focus on my um, Japan clients and I was as busy as I was ever in this year. And now, a few days ago, um, the government in Japan announced the um, state of emergency. And we, are, we all um, are foreseeing that the business will go down in Japan next one month at the soonest, the right, quickest. Uh, we don't know how long it will, it will be. However, uh, the government is uh, asking everyone to stay at home for one month. And luckily, um, the end of March, one client asked one client in Shanghai asked me to come over to uh, to shoot in April, and I did. And what hap what's happening is uh, during this quarantine period, um, these two weeks, okay. I've been getting a lot of uh, messages and calls for potential work, potential jobs in Shanghai. People are waiting for um, shootings. And also, um, uh, now um, Shanghai is the only place where we can do a decent size shooting in the world. So that I've been getting um, a lot of our, uh, uh, several uh, leads for the shootings in Shanghai. But those shootings were originally, initially, um, supposed to be shot in Europe or the US. So uh, I think it is a very good risk hedge for the freelance photographers to split their business in a different countries or area. Yeah. That's one thing. And uh, uh, another thing for the, 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 um, the clients and uh, agencies in the US and Europe, I just want to uh, mention that um, um, in this industry in Shanghai, we are very much um, capable to shoot and produce the uh, world-class visuals. Okay. Unfortunately, this, the cost is not low to, uh, for the production cost. It's not low like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. However, the quality has gone up uh, ridiculously. Mm -hmm. So um, we, I am very confident to shoot the world-class visuals in Shanghai, and that I have been doing in the last um, couple of years with the local production companies. Okay, thank you. So reach out to, to Hero for, for your next shoot in, in Shanghai. Um, so thank you so much for, for all of you. It's been really great information for me and of course for everybody, I'm sure, who, who attended this on Zoom or on YouTube. Um, I really hope, you know, things are going to get much, much better, um, not just in China, but everywhere in the world. And everybody is going to go back to creating amazing, amazing content in the, past, in the next few months. So thanks again and, you know, have a good evening. Um, let's keep in touch, of course. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.